And now for something completely different. Ah! Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show. Presented by RIA Advisors. And good morning. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. I'm Rich Rosso, CFP. Danny Ratliff, CFP. Welcome. Thanks for being here with us this morning. It's been a very interesting week. Futures are Dow down about 30 points. Pretty flat this morning. You know what, Danny? I've been watching Ethereum in the mornings. Like, I've been watching Ethereum overnight, and I think this is just, this is purely anecdotal, everybody. Obviously, crypto is a risk on hyper trade. And when I, when I see a positive open for Ethereum, then I think it, leads off to the rest of the market like it's a general it goes out there first so i always look at what ethereum is doing so it's a leading indicator now is what you're saying well think about what it's done right it's it's like us it's like risk on steroids right so if you're going to have a risk on day generally speaking i think you see bit like uh, ethereum crypto i just or- used but i think you see crypto as this leader that comes out first so I just think that when markets finally do bottom, you're going to see the turn possibly in Bitcoin and crypto first, only because it is such a risk on asset. It's like the general in front of the general. But that's just one of the things I observe. It's no, there's no scientific data here. No, there's nothing academic about it. It's just an observation of risk on versus risk off. Isn't that interesting how quickly that narrative switched so rich? <laughs> I mean, because initially it was designed yeah. to be the new gold, right? And now it's a risk on asset. Well, what it was supposed to be what inflation hedge, mm-hmm. uh, it's supposed to be diversify. You're supposed to diversify your portfolio. Well, it did. It went down most more than anything else. So I guess that is diversification. Oh, it really man. zigged when I zagged, didn't it? Uh, hey, you ever know. get that Every, impression? Everything seemed to zig together. I don't know about zagging. You ever get that impression that Lance wants to do an Elon Musk and kick us both out of here real quick? Like he did the CFO and CEO. <laughs> I keep wondering why he walks around the sink, but you know. <laughs> I thought it was just uh, his, his new workout regimen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lifting the sink above his head. Yeah. He's doing home repairs in that rental. <laughs> Not. I couldn't really get the whole sink thing. And then I said, oh, yeah, that's Elon Musk's sense of humor. That's pretty damn funny. That is pretty damn funny. I think he should have walked in dressed as the Grim Reaper. Holding a sink for Even Halloween. Better. It is Halloween. Yeah, there you go. You never know. He might still do that, like with a blue tweet on, uh, you know, tweet thing on his head, the blue bird on his head. Uh, that might be interesting. So the tale of two sectors, tales of two markets. But obviously, Amazon got its butt kicked. Makes sense, Danny. Right? I mean, uh, it was over. It was down over twenty percent. I think now pre market is down about twelve. It's not, yeah. you know, it didn't get hammered like Meta did. But I think the more important thing about this necessarily isn't what it was missing earnings or, or revenue. It, it was essentially forward guidance. I mean, same thing with Apple. Apple did okay, mm-hmm. uh, but forward guidance. And Apple's still holding up much better than most other tech at the moment. But um, forward guidance just has not looked pretty at the moment. And, you know, where does that stop? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, we, t- we keep talking about this inflationary push which we're beginning to see it's weighing on everybody. But, mm-hmm. you know, you think about a lot of these tech companies and what they do and a lot of the ad revenues that they have and um, the marketing aspect to them. Many of them, um, we're just getting back to normal because we don't have that additional ad spend that we, we historically did mm-hmm. during the pandemic because people are at home with money. So maybe are we, is this the new normal? And do we get back to where we beat fairly quickly? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know. Like you said, post-pandemic, 
the academic numbers are out of whack. Labor force participation, some of the metrics that we've used, doesn't, they don't work. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, we're not spending as much as online because, you know, you have all this, uh, what I call, you know, what is, what do they call it? Revenge travel, revenge mar- shopping. I want to get out there. You're not going to lock me up it's again. It's the YOLO of experiences. You only get locked up once? <laughs> Well, no, clearly not. I mean, China, we're going through Yo-hoo. it again. 800,000 people locked Well, up. yeah, and we're what? Well, we're on restrictions. Ch- we're becoming China, so uh, so who knows? Uh, but I, I just can't imagine us being locked up again. So I think people are still following that, especially the wealthier households. So Musk said that he's going to reverse all the life bans on Twitter. It almost makes me want to get back on Twitter. Almost. Almost. <laughs> so... So he's firing these executives. He's going to go ahead and reverse life bans, put New York Post back on or whatever he's going to do. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this works out for the free speech. Does it mean I get my blue check mark now? Uh, I think you're going to need more than 12 followers. <laughs> oh, Brent, okay. sorry. That hurt. Hey, me too. I'm, I'm right there. <laughs> I'll give you one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we had Exxon profits surpass expectations, natural gas, natural gas export search, and you've seen a real incredible move in energy. Remember last year when, well, last few years when it comes to energy stocks, terribly out of favor, right, Danny? Well, I think they are still terribly out of favor if with at least what mainstream media tells you, but man, if you're an investor. Yeah. Oh yeah. No you, way. You've been in you're the right it. place. In this, but this brings up a very good lesson. The lesson of Exxon versus Meta. And we do own Exxon, FYI. And we have owned Meta. <laughs> we did own Meta. For about a minute. I got a bruise on my mm, from it. Um, Lance was crying like Jim Cramer yesterday over <laughs> Meta. Everybody I'm was sorry. crying over Meta. You know, but it does make from a... If you look at the numbers in Meta, if you break them down and look at the free cash flow, and I'm supr- I'm shocked at the fundamentals of this company and why it's off 80%. It's, but think about the, when you lose faith in management, it was the same thing when Ballmer was the head of Microsoft. He was terrible, right? I mean... If, if there was a change up or a switch up in meta, people would start looking at the fundamentals or he cut away the metaverse. But you know, Danny, you brought this up. He's marketing it incorrectly. There is a lot of potential in this metaverse. It's not just for gaming or if I want to buy virtual property next to, next to shot, Shaq. But, but look, and, that's what know, most people are talking about, right? That's right, the main thing. Right. If you look at any articles, you look at any, I mean, heck, we've. that's the main thing we even talk about is, you know, look at this dummy, he just bought an acre for a million dollars on the metaverse or, you know, this virtual reality. But at the end of the day, I think there's so many useful tools to, towards that they can use that is going to be fantastic. I mean, a doctor can actually practice on not actual people. I mean, you're going to be able to have a lot of training done. A lot of good can come from this mm-hmm. if done right and marketed properly. Marketed That's properly. the problem. Yeah. Like it, you could train, right. You could do probably do better simulations for pilots, uh, microsurgeries for you know for surgeons to go ahead and look at that. There's just so much uh, in that metaverse. The potential is absolutely there. Uh, but boy, he markets that terribly. He puts his face out there in the metaverse, and it doesn't look any better. He looks like a robot in real life. He looks horrific in the metaverse. So I know if I was the president's press secretary, I'd be out there today. What would you be out there about? Look, look, look. Look, look, Exxon's profit exceeded $50 billion this year, and they do not deserve that. Share it with us. Well, they, Share they already it with the people. went off yesterday about Shell, which is not even domiciled here. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they I were thought maybe he saw a nice Shell on the beach over there by the vacation home. Oh, well, isn't that what? Never mind. <laughs> We get back. We want to talk about this from a portfolio perspective, but more most from an emotional perspective. The meta versus Exxon. King Kong versus Godzilla. What could that do for you? What does it mean for your emotions when we get back here 
on Financial Fitness Friday. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year-end economic review special event Tuesday, November 15th. How to address higher taxes in the new year. Should you delay your retirement in 2023? What will the midterm elections mean for markets? Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com for our year-end economic review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. realinvestmentadvice.com Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset your people. Realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN, or again, simply online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Welcome back. I'm just going to repeat this because active listening is is a dead skill. I'm not recommending what? Meta and I'm not recommending Exxon. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm not saying one is better than the other. What I'm saying is you got to look at this from the emotions behind these these two companies, right? So you look at operating margins at Meta. Net profit of $4.4 billion last quarter. Net cash generated of the business, $9.6 billion. Free cash, free cash flow trailing 12 months, $35.8 billion. I didn't even know this company had free cash flow. I know investors are worried about them burning through it. I get, I get the reason why it got derailed. What I'm just looking at it is from an emotional perspective saying sector-wise. Let's look at energy versus tech. Look at whether or not you wanted to touch an energy stock last year or the year before. Tech was the hot babe, right? That tech was it. Momentum traders, that's where you put your money. And it was never going to go out of favor, Danny. If you were a smart portfolio manager of your own portfolio, you should have been doing something very counterintuitive. And you should be doing probably something very counterintuitive now. You should have been trimming out tech last year and purchasing energy well look at pe's yeah i mean energy not, pe's are significantly lower than tech right and i'm not saying that's that energy can't go further here uh, yeah. i'm not saying that at all what i'm saying is if i'm a smart investor i'm trimming profits out of what's doing the best just like what we did with tech last year danny right i mean we did that and we bought into energy but now like what lance is saying is you know we got to take some profits out of energy and start looking at some of the other rubble out there. There's, there are some really good things out there. Fundamentally, I mean, technically look terrible, but that's what smart investors try to do, right? I mean, yes, they want to time it as best they can using the technicals if possible, or they, they'll, they'll average in, right, into a position. But when you look at certain numbers on certain companies and how they've gotten shellacked, and how much they're down, there's a lot of emotion in a, a stock being down 80%, 80%, 90%, 
that's not reflected totally in its fi- in its overall financials. What do you think, Danny? No, I think that's right. Sorry, I wasn't really actively listening, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you see? You see what we go through here? If I you have a portfolio, Danny. Hey, I, you're I'm overweight just, energy I, I'm, right now. What are you gonna do? You're overweight energy. You have like all of a sudden you have your overweight energy and you're really looking like this superstar. Like, look, I called it. Look at me. Right? What am I doing as a smart investor? Trimming it. Like in in the old days, like with covered wagons and crap, we had Goofus and Gallant in the Highlights magazine at the dentist before he made you cry. Right? So I'm Goofus and Gallant. So what am I doing here? Like if, I, if I'm overweight energy just because I bought energy and now it's a big part of my portfolio, well, what, what, what should I... What should I do? Yeah, I think it's time to start trimming a little bit. Here's the, the difficult part is the dollar's been so strong. Mm-hmm. Energy typically has that inverse relationship. Oil does with the dollar. And so there's got to become a point where we're going to see the dollar begin to decline. Central banks are beginning to do a lot more intervention to try to make sure that their currencies uh, are a little bit more stable. We don't have this big discrepancy between the two or any of them in the dollar. So if the dollar declines, we could very likely see oil continue to run for a bit. But what if it doesn't? What if we do see a pullback? Uh, What if we get more information that suggests the economy is slowing down quicker than we expect, which would give me the idea, or or anybody really, maybe it's time to start taking a little bit off the table. Not all, but... No, because if I'm trimming, if I'm, I'm trimming, I'm not taking all of it off the table, right? If you have, we, you know, we have clients that have worked for Exxon and for years and they are emotionally attached to it. And even they are saying it's a good time because they've lived through times when it's underperformed for so long that it's okay to trim it. If it goes up, you still win. Yeah. I still own it. Well, it's like yesterday. It okay, down, so, I still look like a so yesterday I trim at 108. Today uh-huh. I trim at 109. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it, it's not insignificant, but. You're still taking it off the table, especially if you bought it at much, much cheaper prices. I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what if today we would have gotten really bad earnings information uh, or terrible forward guidance. The stock could have plummeted. Um, You know, I think I think it's a great opportunity. All I know is the press secretary. What's her name? John Claude Van Dam, whatever her name is. (laughs) When she comes out and says, we will break you. Oh, that's Drago. Uh, Energy company. We will break that was you. a terrible Arnold. Is that what you're <laughs> no, going that was for? Drago. Mario Drago. Yeah. No, that was the from Rocky. Yeah, yeah. 37. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. I will break you. No, I, I know who that is. I know. I, I'm sorry. It's terrible. I only know Janet Yellen. That's it. And now I'm going to tell you oh, they're man, evil. Oh, man. I thought evil, she was gone. Evil companies. Those, those oil companies. Evil. Castor oil companies are good, though. They make everything go smooth. So... The tale is risk management in the portfolio. I am trimming what's hot. Now, if I have, well, I'll give you an example of a client that's been overweight energy stocks. I can't believe I got a call from him yesterday. and said, you know, I think you're right. I think it's right to trim these. We've got all these goals in his plan. And I said, well, let's put the cash aside for things you're going to need over the next two years. Let's not invest that money. Once you get it, we're going to squirrel. We're going to do what I call the squirrel nut syndrome. We're going to squirrel it away. I had people do that last year, Danny, when the market was so good. Take profits, squirrel it away. You're going to need a car in a couple of years. You're going to need this in a couple of years. Let's build up a cash reserve. Mm -hmm. So smarter clients that even are emotionally attached are starting to get the fact that everything ebbs and flows. What's in the spotlight moves out. And I'm not saying that energy is going to go anywhere or it's not going to continue to do well. I'm just saying is if I'm smart and it's a hot investment, I want to trim it. Even if I put it aside for cash for future goals or there are future buys, like how many buys are coming up for us right now, right? How many, how many companies are showing up on fundamental screens that just technically look terrible? But we're getting a but lot fundamentally, of... Fundamentally, man, if you could close your eyes and... Open them in a year, you're probably well, going to look really good. What did Michael uh, use on the call the other day? The example of Meta versus Duke Energy. The PEs on utility companies versus the PEs on some of these. Like some of these companies are becoming value companies. I'm not saying that Meta has 
you know, there's mismanagement. And once, obviously, you got to step aside and have the discipline and understand what's my ROI is on something or do I cut it? That's where the that's where investors are unsure. They're not well, with, looking at the numbers. They're looking at the decisions that Zuck is making that they think are terrible. Well, and because there's no the ROI, or ROI on it as of yet, right? And right. like you mentioned, he's terrible with marketing. It's horrible. Putting himself in the un, in the metaverse there was not good. Yeah, not I good. Mean, yeah, there's there's a handful of ways you could go about this. Scary and and as him heck. Yeah. being the lead is probably not the right one. Exactly. Not anymore. People have lost, they've lost confidence. Lost I even faith. think Sheryl Sandberg was really good leader. You know, I think he needs somebody else out there to, to, to project, to talk to investors what this metaverse actually could mean to the future and put some numbers to it and help understand as opposed to this is like my pet, this is like my pet project yep. and I'm losing my mind. I'm stuck in the metaverse and I can't get out. You know, God, he looks like a ghoul in the metaverse. It's just terrible. Oh, my God. Hey, so, Danny, I want to help you understand that you've done a really good job um, because mm, intelligent like dot, trick. Yeah, no, Intelligent.com surveyed 1,250 individuals who have applied or plan to apply for Biden's student loan forgiveness program. And guess what? 73% of applicants said they're going to do with the money. They're going to do what you were talking about earlier. They're going to what? Go to the on metaverse? vacation. They're going to go on vacation. Oh, well, here's how they're going to spend it. <laughs> Vacations. Well, wait, I thought this was going to people with no money. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, now you, you just all of a sudden you have all this extra cash. The only cash word flow? that's missing from where they're spending money is porn. And that's probably because it wasn't in the survey. But it was vacations, smartphones, drugs, and alcohol. <laughs> oh, man. So just so you know. Kind of like the way they spend it during college. <laughs> sort of like how the government <laughs> spends it now. And COVID and everything else. It just makes you understand exactly where the money's going. So that was a really good study by Intelligent.com. Well, that's, so, I think that's what's so frustrating when people are sitting here writing checks to, to the IRS for, you know, Treasury Department for taxes. It makes me want to puke. I yeah. have to tell you, when I write the words Treasury Department, I, listen, I believe in paying taxes. I, I, I'm not one person that avoids them. I believe it if the money's going to the right things. I get it. But it does make me sick lately. So two times as many Democrats than Republicans say it's acceptable to spend the money on non-essentials. 77% of applicants said they could use money more wisely while they're buying drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Were they sober when they wrote that? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. I guess they know. The me. person who That's sent good. me this study, I sent her back in months. says, this is the most depressing thing I've received all week. Thank you. I plan to use it. <laughs> well, it, is, it is depressing. Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, that's where funds are going. And, you know, like we've always talked with much stimulus that's done. Unfortunately, it's not deliberate enough. It's not thoughtful enough. And it doesn't go to the right people. Well, because everything, and I'm talking both sides, is is got a political drive to it, not what's actually right to do. And we're blowing ourselves up. Somebody's paying for it. Yeah, you are. You're paying for somebody's drugs and alcohol. But guess what? The same people are getting that that relief. They're paying for it too. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're long not paying term. for it the way they should. Long but we're term. all we're all footing the bill. Long term. Yeah. We're all in the soup. We get back, we want to talk about, well, a lot of other stuff here on Financial Fitness Friday. Stay tuned. investment advice blog it's required reading for the informed investor catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com the end of the year is fast approaching what will the new year bring join richard rosso danny ratliff and lance roberts for our year-end economic review special event tuesday november 15th how to address higher taxes in the new year should you delay your retirement in 2023 what will the midterm elections mean for markets register now at realinvestmentadvice.com 
Ratliff.com for our year-end economic review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. We're looking for our next house eventually, right? We're driving and my wife's scrolling on her phone and she goes, well, there's an open house over here in this neighborhood. So she's like, okay, turn here. And so I turn on the street. And she's like, okay, well, turn here. And I'm like, babe, where's this house at? You're looking at the open house on your phone. That's just, well, I don't have my glasses. I can't see my phone. The Real Investment Show podcast. I had spent like 20 minutes driving around with a blind person giving me directions. At realinvestmentadvice.com. My life is a soap opera. Anyone can sell you insurance and they'll gladly take your premium dollars. The RIA Insurance Agency can provide you with insurance solutions tailor-made for your needs and lifestyle. Because everyone's assets are different, let RIA Insurance review what you need to protect and how. We won't sell you insurance, but what you need will be a matter of policy. RIA Insurance Agency. 888-915-0780. 888-915-0780. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the insurance tab. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at Stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click ask a question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year-end economic review special event. Tuesday, November 15th. Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. We also get a little bit of recovery in futures this morning. Dow is just up literally three points. Now it's down about 15. So relatively flat. I would go for a really nice, calm Friday, Danny. Nice and calm. Nice and calm with some celebrations at the end of the evening. I'd be good with that. That (laughs) An Astros win. Sorry, guys. All you out there not from here who hate the Astros. I get it. Completely understand. I don't know how... So this is, brings up a question for you, all you sports people, that I am but not But don't care, too. No, I mean, I don't understand how you, like, hate a sports team. Or, like, you know, I, I mean, like, why do you put so much energy into disliking a sports team? Like, I, I don't hate anybody or I mean, anything. like, it's great for, oh, I hate a lot of things. And we but, could spend another three hours. Well, uh, but I'm saying is. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to park it there, right? There are things I dislike, but. Yeah, no, you're you're godly that way. I'm not. So um, I'm going to say that, yeah, no, there are a lot of people I hate, and there are a lot of things I hate, and I'm very proud of them. But I want to say that it just seems like a waste of energy. Like I'm, re- like, I'm not a big, I mean, I like baseball. I do like baseball. I'm a big Mets fan, Yankees fan. I'm from New York. I, my, my grandparents, like, I think that's why some people, you like sports teams, yeah. because you're, it's like part of a generational nostalgia thing. There I and- get that. But why aren't you just happy for a city that has a winning team? That's great. That's great for Houston. Well, the that problem makes is people feel bad. You, know, you meet fun. some of their fans and you're like, man, 
this is very tough to cheer for some of these people. Like why? What are they doing? I, I, well, I just can't say the words on air, but oh. they are, you know, hmm. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, there you go. Yeah. Danny does that. Mm-hmm. We yeah. know what that means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I really speak out the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why the we'll FTC is after me. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, but but you do meet some people in certain. You know, I've been to lots of different games and, and yeah. visited and seen many different fans, and a lot of them are great and you know just there for a good time. That some are just so obnoxious. Oh yeah. You know, like, well, oh, okay, it's like on. anything else. You know, I, I remember think, my first time making the playoffs. That goes for some of you out there. I won't watch professional football, but college football I think is pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I think college sports seem to be better. I love college football. Yeah. Way so, more than the yeah, then 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 professional. Uh, but again, I mean, like I don't like I can't say I. Oh my gosh, there's this team I really. Uh, like why? So you don't, don't have know. any team or anything that you're just like. Uh. No, there are, we want a list of people <laughs> and things. I will be here all. We'll give, be give here. Me your pal, top, give we'll me your top be, five. We'll be past Chris Salcedo. No, I can't say one firm's name because you already know. Okay, Connie well, will kill me. You kick that. Lo- push yeah. that one out. Yeah, the rest. No, then, go, but go. there's not a lot left. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought you had a long list. I do, but we. I can't. I mean, that consumes a lot of it. I mean, but okay, then there's okay. a lot of smaller ones. You know what I mean? It's like you have in fractional shares. There's that big thing, <laughs> that big investment, and then there's the fractional share hate. So the, fractional share hate. The the evil empire firm is the big one, but mm-hmm. then there's all these little fractional share ones yeah. that I have. They're so bad that all the they others the are. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm all thinking the about look putting. Good. I mean, I'm actually exactly. thinking about putting it on my tombstone. How much this company stinks, and my daughter's going, like, "What?" <laughs> Dad, you're not thinking straight. Yeah, I'm not. Um, so we have coming up uh, a really good year-end economic review, a lunch and learn, Tuesday, November 15th. Uh, again, we would love your questions about this. We're going to give you some perspective on year-end, uh, tax-effective portfolio and planning tips. I think you and Lance went over some of those on Wednesday, but we'll, we'll continue. I mean, I think you did. Tax yeah, loss no, harvesting we, and some other We spent other a little thing. bit more time because he talked about tax loss harvesting on Monday and oh, okay. wanted to dive into you know, what it means for your tax brackets. And you know you potentially have some that you may not be paying taxes on. So hmm. you and I can talk more about that uh, yeah. a little bit more intelligently later maybe. And then the midterm elections, you know, what does that mean for markets just even psychologically, right? Um, Mark, we all know markets love gridlock. Lance will have some charts just to... to, to provide to you obviously it's been a rough year it would be nice if we went in through we we get into the seasonally good part of the year for the markets and we close on a on a strong note i think it's going to be different next year but i think that it would be a nice breather if we put the brakes on the fiscal spending and that gives markets a chance to sort of cool down and emotions to cool down even if we consolidate for the good part of the rest of the year, I am fine with that too. Yeah. We'll see how that works. We shall see. So credit card debt, Danny, has returned to levels before COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are back up to total credit card balances at $916 billion last month. This is the highest in 20 years. Uh-huh. The fastest growth pace that we've seen in, in credit card balances. So this is not inconsequential. No. If you were saying, oh, well, things are strong. You know, Lance and I talked about this the other day where, you know, banks, the CEOs were coming out and talking about forward guidance and, oh, look, there's so much money in all these cash coffers. Everybody's doing great. Savings rate, personal savings rate has plummeted to three and a half percent. Credit card debt has gone through the roof. I mean, it was nice to see that personal savings rate up there for a bit, wasn't it? Man. And I was like, well, but we couldn't wait to drain it. And part of it is, un- unfortunately, part of it is just, People are trying to make ends meet. Well, you got picked so, up demand, but then now, yeah, I think it is yeah. more people trying to make ends meet just because w- what's happening? Higher inflation, higher interest rates. I mean, it's a killer. Yeah, I mean, missed payments on credit cards, they're rising, but they're below pre-pandemic levels, but it's definitely something to watch. You have more and more it's being spent on the basics, and um, it's creating a lot of pressure, and wage growth's not keeping up. And we're starting to see those breaks in the economy uh, overall. And it'll be with mortgage rates topping 7%. That's the highest since 2002, 
right? The and housing prices. Lawrence Yoon, I think, over at the National Association of Realtors, is saying that you know we're already in a housing recession, and you're going to see some markets down by twenty percent. I mean, it's not the financial crisis; it's not the same element, but you are going to see house prices have to come down. Yeah, Brent. It, it, so if you're going to buy a new house, Brent, for the for your little puppy, this isn't the time. I got burial plots in the backyard. <laughs> Well, you know what we're seeing more of, and so so people, there are people that have to move. You're moving for jobs, you're moving for family. Right. But That's when you have to move, right? Then you, you got to make these decisions. Yeah, correct. But sure. one thing, you know, we were talking about is that there's more and more people that are assuming more mortgages. Now, that's something that I don't think is talked about enough. Well, talk about it, because I don't well, know what you mean. Well, you can assume somebody's mortgage, and so essentially, let's say that mm-hmm. you have a home that's, and I'm going to make a number of $500,000, and... Uh, there's a mortgage on this house for 350000 that the current owner has. They may be able to go to the mortgage company or the service provider and have the new, the new owner assume that. Now, you're historically going to have to come out of pocket with more cash. And, you know, we are seeing, you know, prices are still relatively elevated. But this could be a really good way for somebody to attain or afford a home if you can assume that mortgage at Two and a half, three and a half, four percent versus six or seven right now. I mean, it's pricing people out. So there's mm-hmm. still ways to do this. And I feel like this doesn't get enough credit or people aren't talking about this enough. Now, granted, not every provider is going to allow you to do this. Right. Um, right. If it's a if it's a government or a VA loan, it, the likelihood's probably not uh, it's probably fairly slim. But this is something I would be talking to people. If I'm selling a home right now and I have a mortgage on the house, I would certainly look and see if I could do that because I think that gives you a leg up over many other properties in the area. And you may be, if, as, a, as a seller, maybe even be able to sell it for a bit more because people can afford it because they're assuming that loan and that monthly payment's going to be a lot less. See, I have some really negative thoughts around assuming because I'm from the odd couple Felix Unger school. Okay. When you assume, you make an ass out of you and mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. But I... I, uh, that it does make sense. Just like I wrote a piece not, not too long ago about the bank of mom and dad, right? You have families that are giving intrafamily loans, official loans to children uh, at the APRs, uh, the, the AFRs, I mean, I'm sorry, yep. uh, the federal rates. And these are much lower. I don't Correct. know what they are lately, what the AFRs are lately, but they are um, much more affordable than 7% for families looking to make these intrafamily loans loans um so you know people are going to get creative if they have to move if not we use the four letter word we've been using the four letter word for a while wait wait that's right with the fed moving out of the way a cycle occurs and you will be able to get a better price for an area that you're looking for i'm even seeing houses in the hill country danny sitting on the market a lot longer than yeah. they did before. AFR which I haven't really four. seen, but I haven't really seen before. How, what's the AFR? It's now? around four. So as opposed to seven. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, right? Well, it just depends on what the amount is. Well, so what's yeah. a 30-year? Mm, they don't have that on okay, here. Okay, what's, what's, what is it? They're just showing short, mid, oh, okay. and long-term from the Fed. What's your Hold long-term? On. Four. Four, okay. I mean, you're looking so, at okay. you know 3.92 to 5.1. Well, heck, if someone has the money sitting there and they want to help their children, right? We wrote all kinds of rules on how you should make these loans properly without putting yourself into jeopardy financially. All right, now it somebody just brought this up, Rich. What, yeah, about, what about taking a 401k loan? I know what your thoughts are on this. I just want to hear it. Oh, oh I got the vapors. <laughs> Listen, I understand why you would do it, right? I'm paying myself back, Right. I'm going to go ahead and take a 401k loan at a time when probably I might look to get lose my job and I have to pay that loan back. I keep my retirement goals separate. I am not going to touch those accounts. There's those so much accounts. leakage in those already. It's very difficult to put those funds back. Most people don't do it like they think they would. Plus, it might stop you from making contributions in the future. If you're 100% sure of your job, I can make a case for it sometimes. Well, do you want to buy right now or do you want to yeah, no, think about I it? Still, do you, or do you want to pay the loan? That's a great point. From the other side of the decision, I still don't want to buy here. So I'm going to wait anyway. We get back 10 steps, 10 years to retirement piece I wrote. I'm going to go over the first three to five steps. We'll be right back.
Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year-end economic review special event Tuesday, November 15th. How to address higher taxes in the new year. Should you delay your retirement in 2023? What will the midterm elections mean for markets? Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com for our year-end economic review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Yeah, well, you know, if you think this GDP number was so great, when you look inside of it, you realize it's not. Right? First of all, if I look at GDP over the over this year, we're at zero. We're a big fat zero. Okay. So it's been stagflation nation around here so forget that and then most of the gains were in exports i believe and with the dollar the way it is right now you can throw that out the window so you know just take this you know one report is i i never look at one report as oh this is great or this is bad i just got to look at it over longer periods right so you got to look at what causes gdp to move and what if it if it's in jeopardy and or what what's overall GDP for the year, okay? If anything, it's stagnation, and that's, that isn't good. So um, it, I think next year, Danny, is going to be interesting. I think next year, as we get closer to closer to the Fed breaking something, um, it's going to be very interesting to see the denial start to really dwindle away and acceptance come into play. Well, and as the supply chain be, you know, continues to evolve and, and get better, a lot of these things are going to, to change, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, especially from an inflationary pressure. Uh, GDP, what does that look like when everything does really slow down? I mean, we're, we're there, right? I think yeah. we're there. Numbers su su should suggest that we are. Heck, I don't even know what's worse. Just going along. Listen, I've said years ago. And I believe it now. It could be like Japan's situation. You pop in and out of so much recession. quicker cycles, right? It's much quicker cycles. Yeah. They're not as deep, and you you move in and out of recession, and you're just in this malaise. You got this zombie economy with all the debt that you have going on, and and with the, with poor demographics, and you just limp along. And this very well is what it could be as we go forward. So, you know, I don't know what's worse, cleansing it out all at once or just going along like this. Well, here's the problem. Yeah. How do you fix the debt? Stop giving loan forgiveness <laughs> for drugs and alcohol. Is that one of the ways we do it? Well, you, you know, you, you think about it. We, we keep talking about balancing a budget and doing all the things that we know we should, being fiscally responsible yet we keep doing the complete opposite of it. Mm -hmm. And when, when do we get out of it? How do you get I out of it? I don't know. Because you don't want, you don't you want to go through I, what we're going to have to go through it, to get out of it. Because it's going it's to take austerity, and nobody's going to like that. No one's going to do that. 
uh, no one would have the political will to even start to do that. But you can grow out of it, but you, you nobody's having any babies. There's no demographic. I mean, yeah. demographics are terrible. How do you grow out of it? Look at where productivity is in the country. I mean, th- we're stuck with this 10,000-pound weight on our backs that I don't think in our lifetimes, Danny. And trying to run uphill. Right. Right. I mean, I understand we're still the cleanest, dirty shirt. I mean, there are worse countries than, than us, right? Still grateful, much, very grateful to be here. Oh, absolutely. And, and look, uh, we have But more we could be than, so much better, yeah. really. Are we this stupid? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's the end of the Clearly, show. Clearly, I mean, and, and we're <laughs> stupid enough to keep electing these people. Well, and, and, it's, think, and look, it's everybody, right? No, I mean, it is. And I think we used to have this overarching, we care about the country, right? We put politics. Yes, we understand there are politics and everything, but we, we do what's f- for the greater good, right? I want everybody to have uh, equal opportunity to do their best. I, I love the idea of that. I love the idea of, di- you know, people who immigrate here and do well, do better than me. I don't care. Right. I'm happy that you're doing well. Um, I always look at it that way. Uh, equal outcome is not where I, I can't can't survive. But equal opportunity is a big deal for me. Um, and it's nice to see it. But it's a challenge, Danny, for people that are trying to retire. Or plan to retire in this. Right. I talked to someone yesterday. He's like, gosh, you don't want to retire in the next couple of years. Rich. what am I going to do? Well, remember, we talked about if. First, we've built into our plans these much lower return projections. But, you know, your withdrawal rate, we've seen the academic studies that show withdrawal rate's going to be roughly from a variable asset portfolio for distribution purposes, not 4%, 2.6. So how do I cobble this together? How, how do I put together at this time of high inflation? And I have some people that could retire. And they say, Rich, just give me your personal opinion. Should I? And I'm like, I wouldn't. I, you could. It's nice to know you can. Because you can pull the trigger at any time you want. But would I here? No. I wouldn't. That's, you ask me what I would do personally? I'd run my plan. I know I'm still successful. I would buy time by working longer. And I think a lot, I think a lot of retire. Uh, people who are looking to retire are going to postpone it working Whether longer they have the money or not. contract work uh side gigs downsize downsize spend less um a lot of calls hey you're sending x amount every month you know what it's been building up in savings we're not spending it let's just let's i it have there, right? a few clients that have big homes that they don't want to sell but guess what they're doing they're renting out rooms and i'm like wait a minute we got to understand the security here we're like we're going back to boarding houses and i'm like hey if you want to make that work there are people that would probably love to live in your beautiful home and they have their own room and they have their, they have a bathroom and, you know, just know who you're bringing into your house. So I've seen this increase anecdotally from just people I'm talking to is I'm bringing borders in. I'm like, wow, it's like 1930 <laughs> all over again. Well, we all going to live at Brent's, but, um, uh, I got two two extra rooms and two extra baths. And I can take care of the dog. I'm really good with dogs. She'd love you. I do. Yeah. <laughs> but you're seeing that. Well, look, how many families are living together now? We have a lot more, more. I think 19 to 26 year olds living at home more than any other time, even World War II. Well, not only that, but baby boomers are the sandwich generation because a lot of them have, you know, yes. parents at home, mm-hmm. kids at home. You've got multi generational families. Um, I don't know. I mean, hey, I, it's a good way to make ends meet. Listen, I see it on next door. Next door is as if you think Twitter's a zoo. <laughs> next door is brutal. Well, stuff people put out there. There's a car that's still sitting out there for ten minutes. <laughs> uh, like, do I really live next door to that? Yeah. What is going well, on? The in my common house? sense is yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's not next but door. I have it's not seen common. More, yeah. more say thirty year olds in my next door that have moved back home. And what has happened is there's this contractor does a really good job of turning garages into casitas Mm -hmm. and posting photos and this little, and they're happy to be at home. And they're living in these little small garage type apartments. I mean, we we always find a way to make do, but I'm just seeing a lot of this on Nextdoor where kids are moving home and they're happy to be home. 
And I'm like, shoot, if my parents were still alive, I'd like to live at home too. I called, I called my dad a couple months back, maybe <laughs> six months ago. I was like, hey, you seen home prices? He said, yeah, why? I said, man, I think it's time to sell. Um, I'm going to sell. Come move in with you for a while. Wait for things to, to calm down a little bit. He's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. It's a good deal. Dad, do you understand that we're all doing this now? Move. I'll pay nope. rent. Yeah. Nope, doesn't matter. I now, there, there is a practical aspect to that, though. As your parents age, you can help take care of them. That's well, true. and this was part of the thing on next door. Yeah. Where, you know, listen, you're all making fun of me and moving back home. But my parents have not prepared for long-term yeah. care. And I'm going to be the caregiver. My parents have. They, they planned well. But my brother and sister and I are still rotating weekends going yeah. up to take care of them wow. now. Even with, with really good planning and, and yeah. the funds, the means to do it, it takes... It entails a lot of work for the family. It absolutely does. It is very rare that you see it where it's a hand off, hands off. And approach. happy to do it, I might add. Oh, of course. Of course. You know, it's, when it's I have honor. a problem, my husband said he's not helping me, but I should get the pool boy to do it. And I'm very happy with that idea. <laughs> That's Miss Janet Yellen. Yes. Is that what she's been doing lately? Yeah. Hanging out by the pool? That's all. I, actually, I would prefer if she just hung out by the pool and never came out of <laughs> retirement again. She's huffing chlorine. <sighs> she's huffing something. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so if I'm 10 years, seven years from retirement, I, I can go ahead and look at a step-by-step -step approach to do this. I can, I can prepare. I don't have to do it all at once. I can take a step at a time. And Danny, I never know if you've seen these, but these are these um, aging apps. Like, like if, if I have someone who's 40 years old and they want to retire at, say, 60, mm -hmm. they, it's a hard time Getting them into, yes, some will do a plan, but some of them are like, it's so nebulous. I, I, I can't, it's 20 years from now, right? And they have these incredible apps, Aging Booth, Our Face, Oldify, right? Where you can visualize what your life will be like and how you'll age physically. So you bring in your future. You're talking about the cosmetic part of it, right? Yeah, but, it, but what happens with, and there's been studies about this, if you would see, if you can see your older self, you might be able to place yourself in that position as opposed to being, I don't get this. Well, maybe we should put that within the financial planning. Like, you, you know, know what? oh, you're, you're 60. Here's what you That's look like. That's not you're a bad. 65, 70. That's not a bad idea. That's not a, I did mine. You know what it came up with? No. A tombstone. Janet Yellen? <laughs> the aging app was just like a stone, <laughs> like Ebenezer Scrooge. Don't look at the stone. <laughs> So, I mean, there, these apps, Merrill Lynch actually at one time were using these face, this visual technology to help young people understand what, what they would look like. And once they saw themselves, they were able to sort of put themselves in those shoes to start some type of planning. It makes it a little bit more real. Yeah. Right? Danny did his. He looks exactly the same. No, that's not the truth. I'm getting no, grayer. Actually, each day, losing more hair each day. These markets are... The meme, the meme was they showed Leonardo DiCaprio and all these movie stars looking older. Keanu Reeves looks, looks just like Keanu yep. Reeves. No aging. Thanks for live being... like that guy. Give, give your money away. <laughs> that guy's... He's... I like him. That's it for us today. Financial Fitness Friday. Lance on Monday. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay calm. <laughs>